Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be briefly talking about the moon. Or specifically about a simulation that you can check out by yourself, that's absolutely free, that shows you a little bit about the history of moon landings. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So there's this person by the name of Ian Webster who works at Zenesis as an engineer and he makes these incredible, incredible simulations. Specifically, uh, this is the one we used before, Asterang, that basically grades and rates all of the asteroids in our solar system. We've also looked at ancient Earth um, and the history of Earth. Uh, and he has a lot of other really, really cool stuff, including, of course, this huge, huge simulation of the uh, visible uh, universe um, using something like 2 billion stars near to us. Today we're going to take a look at this one called the moon. Now this simulation is pretty simple, it doesn't really have much in it, but it's a, it's an excellent tool to study the history of moon landings and, or just to like basically find out where certain things, how many of you know where exactly uh, the Apollo 11 mission landed and uh, where Neil Armstrong actually walked on the moon. Not many people actually would be able to point at the moon and say, oh it was right there. Uh, or, you know, similarly, where the first moon landing occurred when the Russians landed their, um, their uh, Luna 1 mission. So, by opening controls here, we can just literally do that. So, first of all, let me show you how many missions and how many landings there are in total currently. So, if I actually um, accelerate time just a little bit and increase the year here, here we go. This is how many there are. There's actually quite a lot of uh, satellites you can see orbiting around the moon and all of those yellow points you see, that's the landings. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's quite a lot of them. And by pointing at them, you can see each and single one of them. And then you might have to just go on Wikipedia or something just to look up more about each of them individually. Now, I kind of wish that there was a way to just click and go to those uh, links directly, but I guess maybe he'll add it in one of the future versions, especially if he's watching this video, maybe you can just add the link. But, you know, if I want to see what this is and I want to find out more about it, wouldn't it be cool if you just pointed at it, if you just pointed at it, if you just point, 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 Okay, there's a bug. There we go. It's a Lunar Orbiter 1 in 1966 by USA, but it'd be nice if it was a link that you could just go on, right, 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 like that, you know, boom. But instead, we have to go on the Wikipedia and find out that this is what the Lunar Orbiter 1 was. But you know what? This is actually kind of a way to learn anyway, so you can basically just go and read about these uh, missions by, by doing this. But anyway, let's just go back in time for a second. Now let's uh, let's go let's go through these years very slowly. So I'm gonna look at the visible side of the moon, not at the um, not at the dark side. And here up until the 60s, actually 59, there was nothing. And then in 1960, guess who landed on the moon first? Yeah, you probably guessed it correctly. The Russians came here. And there is that Luna 2 mission, 1959. Luna 1, I believe, just kind of flew past the moon, didn't actually land there. Um, and you can check out the video I made several years ago about Luna 1 and Luna 2 missions, where I tried to actually recreate them using um, Kerbal Space Program. And then as the years advanced, there's more and more missions that will actually appear here. So by uh, 1965, there should be quite five, not six. Five, five, this is kind of difficult, there we go. There should be at least uh, four missions. There's Luna 2, there is Ranger 6 from the US, uh, there is also Ranger 7, and then we have something else right here. This is, I believe, is the Orbiter. Oh no, that's Ranger 4, never mind. So, um, quite a lot of various missions, and then as you advance this further, you'll discover that within the next four years, there was a huge explosion of lunar exploration, and basically, there's a lot of landers here and there. Most of them are just um, either rover-type machines or just simple landers that would just land and try to retrieve a sample and possibly even return back to Earth. Um, a lot of these were either Ranger mission or Luna mission from the Soviet Union. And not a single uh, one of them was man-based man yet, until of course Apollo 11, this was the uh, the race to the moon that lasted until 1969. And so if we actually advance to 1969, there you go, you can now see 
the Apollo 11 mission, which I think it's somewhere in this little area. There it is, actually. Ha! Huh. Apollo 11, right next to the Surveyor 5 and Ranger 8. Uh, so this was the first uh, mission where Neil Armstrong got to walk the moon and uh, basically have or exclaim his famous uh, expression about the, this being the first step and the huge step for humanity. You know that, what I'm talking about, right? Anyway, uh, and then there was another mission here that I don't seem to know where it is. I think it was somewhere here. There's another Apollo mission that... Uh, oh, actually, we can do this. We can change this to human. Human only. Oh, there it is. Apollo 12 is right here. So this was the second landing. As you can see, it's actually quite far away from the first landing. And uh, we can actually just advance to, uh, uh, to further years just to see all of the human missions. Uh, but just one thing I want to show you. So between 1971 and between present, we we'll notice how there is very, very little advancement. So this is this right here in these like five, six years. This is when most uh, lunar missions happened. So the you know air air of excitement, people were super, super excited about the moon, and then suddenly kind of like that waned, and you know the finances took a huge toll, and uh, the U.S. program and the Soviet program started to focus on other areas. And so Moon was kind of forgotten. Until very recently when China decided to go back, and now US is also thinking about going back there too. Uh, but so yeah, up until these uh, 2000s basically, uh, or even mid-2000s, there's pretty much nothing here, nothing new here. Uh, but let's actually look at... Uh, uh, well, first of all, let's look at if there's any private missions here. And as you can see, there's nothing. Even for advanced time, and so this is this is because the simulation is not finished yet. But there are private missions that are being planned that will land on the moon. There's even a Google mission that's coming here sometime soon. And if you look at the human missions, there are those uh, six missions that we see. Uh, there's nothing on the other side; it's all on the visible side of the moon, and it's basically Apollo missions: Apollo 17, 15, 11. Uh, there's Apollo 16 right there, and it's hard to for navigate this a little bit. Apollo 14, and the last way, Apollo 12. Uh, so this is all of the uh, human missions. They're all by the U.S., and pretty much all of them happened within, like, what, uh, three years f from the initial landing, and then the missions were stopped because there was nothing else to prove, and the U.S. technically won the space race, or at least the race to the moon. Now, um, that's really kind of all I wanted to show you in this video, because there's a lot of things you can explore by yourself, and this will hopefully get updated so that we get to see other missions from other countries. Like, for example, you know, there will be some Indian missions eventually, and there might be some Chinese missions. Actually, there was at least one Chinese mission here already, but it doesn't show here yet, so because this is still in early development. But all of the American and Soviet missions are there, so you can go and check them out. Um, and honestly, this is a pretty cool simulation. I hope he keeps working on it and creates some other really cool things here, especially links to things that we can learn or use this to learn about the moon. It's a pretty cool simulation. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. And most importantly, if you would like to support this channel a little bit more, you can always support this channel on Patreon, and the link for this is available in the description below. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else you may have not known before. Space out, and as always, bye bye. I really hope he gets rid of these annoying pop-ups that don't want to disappear as well, because look, I'm trying to make it not appear so much, and when I want it to appear, it doesn't. These are all obviously bugs that need to be worked out, but all in all, Ian Webster has been doing an amazing job with these, so I'm really happy with it.